Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm going to take you through cerebrovascular accident, commonly known as stroke. Let's get started. Cerebrovascular accident is the sudden onset of some brain cells due to lack of oxygen when the blood flow to the brain is impaired by blockage or rupture of an artery to the brain. A CVA is also referred to as a stroke. Symptoms of a stroke depends on the area of the brain affected. Okay, let's look at the definition of stroke. So, it is defined as the death of the brain tissue, which is also known as a cerebral infarction, resulting from lack of blood flow and insufficient oxygen to the brain. Stroke can be either ischemic or hemorrhagic. In an ischemic stroke, the blood supply to a part of the brain is cut off because there is either atherosclerosis or a blood clot has blocked a blood vessel. In hemorrhagic stroke, a blood vessel ruptures, preventing normal blood flow and allowing blood to leak into an area of the brain and destroy it. Let's look at the etiology. Stroke is a neurological deficit that has a sudden onset and lasts for more than 24 hours. The risk factors or the predisposing factors of stroke we have the modifiable factors the non-modifiable factors and other factors let's start by looking at the non-modifiable factors so under non-modifiable factors we have age so you find that scarcely to 70 percent of all the strokes in persons they are over 65 years of age then sex so men have a slightly increased incidence of stroke, possibly because of the poor control of hypertension and heart diseases. Race is also another non-modifiable factor. You find that blacks are twice as likely to develop thrombotic stroke and three times more likely to develop hemorrhagic stroke. So apart from the non-modifiable factors, we also have the modifiable factors. Under these modifiable factors, we have hypertension. So hypertension is a major risk factor for stroke. High cholesterol, particularly in combination with atherosclerosis. People with heart rhythm disturbances, especially atrial fibrillation, are also at risk. Heart disease is a major contributor to stroke both from atherosclerosis and as a common source of emboli. Another modifiable factor is diabetes. So diabetes, this is associated with uh, an accelerated rate of microvascular and macrovascular changes that contribute to atherosclerosis. So we have discussed the non-modifiable factors and the modifiable factors. Let's look at the other factors. Okay. So other factors, we have cigarette smoking, oral contraceptive use, especially if that person is also a smoker, alcohol intake, family history of uh, stroke, obesity, sedentary lifestyle. So these are the other factors that can contribute uh, to stroke. Let's now discuss the pathophysiology of stroke. So the brain must receive a steady supply of nutrients from the blood because it has no capacity to store either oxygen or glucose. It is supplied with blood from the two major pairs of arteries. We have the internal carotid and the vertebrals. 
The carotid supplies the anterior portions of the brain, including most of the cerebral hemispheres except the occipital lobe. The vertebrae join together to become the basilar artery and supply the posterior portions of the brain, including the cerebellum, brainstem, and the occipital lobe. So, functionally, the two brain hemispheres have separate circulations. The complex process of cerebral autoregulation maintains blood flow to the brain at a fairly constant rate of 750 mL per minute. Prolonged ischemia can cause primary death of cerebral cells or cerebral infunction, which creates a core of necrotic tissue. Ischemia is known to cause the following disparate responses. There's impaired movement of calcium and potassium, where you're going to find that there are, there's going to be high levels of calcium, which are believed to trigger the activation of enzymes that attack neurons and the cell membranes. Accumulation of oxygen-free radicals, which further disrupts calcium metabolism, enhances lactate production from the presence of glucose in low perfusion areas which worsens cellular damage and acidosis. An influx of activated fluid activates white blood cells and coagulation factors that further clog the microcirculation. The pathology associated with hemorrhagic stroke is primarily related to an abrupt rise in intracranial pressure and ischemia, followed by cerebral edema with intracerebral bleeding, blood is forced into the adjacent brain tissue where hematoma forms. The compression of tissue then extends the ischemic damage and can result in brain tissue displacement of herniation. Alright, let's now discuss the types of stroke. I'm sure by now you have an idea of those types of stroke. So, stroke is classified as ischemic or hemorrhagic depending on underlying pathophysiologic findings. From those classified types of stroke, let's start by looking at the ischemic stroke. So, this results from inadequate blood flow to the brain from partial or complete occlusion of an artery. It accounts for 80% of all strokes. Ischemic strokes are further divided into thrombotic and embolic strokes. Thrombotic stroke is the most common cause of stroke at 60%. It occurs from injury to blood vessel wall and formation of a blood clot. The lumen of the blood vessel becomes narrowed, and if occluded infunction occurs, thrombosis develops where atherosclerotic plagues have already narrowed the blood vessel. Two-thirds of ischemic stroke are precipitated by hypertension or diabetes mellitus, which accelerate atherosclerosis. The extent of stroke depends on rapid onset size of lesion and presence of collateral circulation. Symptoms may progress in the first 72 hours as infunction and cerebral edema increases. So this is about um, thrombotic stroke. Let's now look at embolic stroke. So embolic stroke occurs when an embolus lodges in and occludes a cerebral artery resulting in infunction and edema of the area supplied by the artery. It is the second most common cause of stroke, accounting for 24% of all stroke. The embolus travels up and lodges where a vessel narrows or bifurcates. Heart conditions Associated with emboli include atrial fibrillation, myocardial infarction, infective endocarditis, valvular 
prosthesis and rheumatic heart diseases before we go further to help you uh, appreciate what we've discussed so far let's look at this diagram okay so here we have um, a zoomed image of uh, the cerebral artery when you look at this image we have two types of stroke occurring here we have the ischemic one and the, the hemorrhagic stroke remember we mentioned that under hemorrhagic there is a rupture of and the blood vessel usually due to the pressure which is in there so we'll discuss about the hemorrhagic stroke later but let's look at this ischemic type so under ischemic we said there should be a blockage now under ischemic we further divided ischemic um stroke into two we said we have a thrombotic and an emboli so the difference between the two you find that a thrombosis or a thrombotic stroke this is where you find that a clot uh, is formed in a blood vessel so this is a clot that we are talking about okay so it clogs or uh, blocks the blood vessel and remember we said there should be a combination of um, atherosclerosis so this is the fat deposition which is atherosclerosis which is there under emboli emboli and emboli this is where you have a clot a fat or air bubble um traveling through the the blood vessel and there is a risk of it lodging elsewhere okay so both the thrombotic stroke or throm thrombosis and emboli can block blood flow and increase the risk of stroke so this is the blockage which is there and this blockage is as a result of a thrombus or an emboli okay let's continue with a embolic stroke the majority of the emboli originate from the endocardial layer of the heart with a plague breaking off from the endocardium and entering the general circulation the less common causes of emboli are air and fat from long bone fractures and you find that usually the patient has rapid occurrence of severe clinical signs the onset is usually sudden and may or may not be related to activity the effects of emboli are initially characterized by severe neurologic deficits which can be temporal if clots break up and allow blood to flow let's now discuss the other type of stroke which is the hemorrhagic stroke so hemorrhagic stroke accounts for about 15 percent of all strokes and results from bleeding into the brain tissue there are two main types of hemorrhagic stroke we have the intracerebral hemorrhage and the subarachnoid hemorrhage let's start by looking at the intracerebral hemorrhage so this is a bleeding within the brain caused by rupture of a vessel hemorrhage occurs during periods of activity it accounts for 10 percent of all strokes the prognosis is poor with 50 percent mortality within the first 48 hours hypertension is the most important cause there is sudden onset of symptoms with progression over minutes or hours due to ongoing bleeding symptoms include neurological deficits headache nausea vomiting decreased level of consciousness and hypertension in 50 percent of patients the other type of hemorrhagic stroke is subarachnoid hemorrhage this occurs when there's intracranial bleeding into the cerebrospinal fluid field space between arachnoid and pia mater membranes it is commonly caused by rupture of cerebral aneurysm about 85 percent of people with stroke die due to cerebral aneurysms during the first episode 